Guyana, even though not an island, is classified as a small island development state, as it has many of the characteristics and vulnerabilities of SIDS, including exposure to similar climate risks. Guyana's Atlantic coast is just about one and a half meters below the mean high tide, which exposes this beautiful country to all the risks associated with sea level rise. With 90% of our population living on the coast, the potential consequences of sea level rise are dire and imminent. Over the last two decades, devastating floods were experienced in Guyana, with the worst and most recent occurring in 2021. At the other end of the spectrum, severe drought events have been experienced on multiple occasions. In 2023, Guyana's highest temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius were recorded for the very first time. These events underscore the devastating impacts of climate change on small island and coastal states like Guyana. Perhaps there are still many who believe that Guyana and other SIDS should not be too concerned about the state of the cryosphere, given their relative distance from the poles and glaciers. But those of us here are well aware of the critical link between the melting cryosphere and the escalating threat of sea level rise. We are far away in the SIDS, but still connected, still the most vulnerable. Guyana and other SIDS are not isolated or insulated from the impacts of changes to the cryosphere. Understanding these changes is as important, or perhaps even more important, to SIDS as it is to countries that are in closer proximity to the poles and glaciers. Here in Guyana, we are already experiencing unprecedented changes in several areas. Guyana's coast is particularly prone to rising sea levels, which is largely driven by the melting of glaciers and ice sheets. This poses a direct threat to infrastructure, settlements, and agricultural lands. Sections of Guyana's coastal zone are protected from the Atlantic Ocean by reinforced concrete levees and other heavy infrastructure. Over many decades, these structures have kept our coastline safe from the ocean's onslaught. However, in recent years, we've had to increase the height of these structures by at least one meter because a much more boisterous ocean is crashing over our once secure defenses as storm surges grow stronger and higher. Over 90% of potable water along Guyana's coast originates from groundwater sources. Sea level rise poses a direct threat to the quality of our groundwater supplies by increasing the risk of saltwater intrusion into our coastal aquifers and by contaminating coastal wells whenever there are storm surges. Sea level rise will push the groundwater lens further inland, making access to high quality water difficult for coastal communities and settlements. Rising sea levels will only make the impacts of storm surges worse during extreme weather events. Though Guyana has never been directly impacted by hurricanes or tropical storms, our coast is affected by storm surges triggered by these events. Climate projections indicate that hurricanes will become bigger and more violent. As these storms make their passage across the Caribbean, the destructive power of the accompanying storm surges will be amplified, causing more severe flooding and unprecedented damage to our fragile coastal zone. Coastal ecosystems, including wetlands and mangroves, are vital to the survival of Guyana's coast. These ecosystems provide natural barriers against storm surges and support biodiversity. Some of these ecosystems are both unique and fragile. Increasing sea levels and change, changes in ocean dynamics can lead to the degradation and loss of these critical ecosystems. The loss of biodiversity can have cascading effects on ecosystem services and disrupt the balance of local ecosystems. This will also threaten Guyana's reputation as a carbon sink, with its 85% pristine forest coverage believed to remove a massive 154 million tons of CO2 equivalent per year. As the sea level rises, it erodes our already vulnerable coastline, leading to the loss of the most fertile lands and even low-lying communities. One coastal indigenous community, Almond Beach, 
has been experiencing these impacts over the past two decades. Apart from being an indigenous community, Almond Beach serves as a nesting ground for four species of turtles. However, increasing sea levels has caused the community to retreat inland on several occasions, forcing residents to eventually abandon their historical homes and creating what is believed to be Guyana's first group of climate migrants. A once thriving community centered on conservation and sustainable development, outfitted with its own school, its own hospital, playground, church, and farmlands, has been almost completely obliterated with, the more, with more than 90% of infrastructure destroyed and just a handful of residents remaining. The projections are scary in the coming years. The experience of Almond Beach will be repeated over and over again across this beautiful country and across perhaps all SIDS. Guyana is viewed as the breadbasket of the Caribbean region and is seen as critical to achieving the regional goal of reducing its food import bill by 25% by the year 2025. This ambition relies heavily on Guyana being able to sustain its very fertile coastal plains as a center of agricultural activities. Damage to infra infrastructure, loss of coastal resources, and the increased frequency of extreme weather events will lead to significant economic setbacks, not only for Guyana, but the entire Caribbean community, whose food and nutrition security lies heavily on the success of Guyana's coastal agriculture. Friends, colleagues, addressing matters related to the cryosphere is not only critical to Guyana, but all SIDS. What happens in one part of the planet affects other parts of the world. We are not isolated nor insulated. Addressing the impacts of a melting cryosphere requires international cooperation, financial support, and a commitment to ambitious, ambitious climate action. Together, we must forge a path forward that integrates research, advanced technologies, international collaboration, and a commitment to safeguarding the future of vulnerable people everywhere, especially remembering those of us who call the SIDS home.